Hello everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use GPT-3 AI as a sparring partner for your thinking and ideas. So that in the end, you can challenge yourself in an interesting way using an AI and develop your ideas further. I will use the software which I created that's called Infranodus, which you can see on my left, which visualizes any text as a network, shows the main concepts, how they're related, and what are the main topical clusters. And then based on this information, it can communicate with GPT-3 AI in a much more intelligent way than a human being would because it knows already which parts of the discourse are the most important, how they are connected, and most importantly, what are the parts that could be better connected so that it can then question them in an interesting way. I'm going to show you how it works using, as an example, my own ideas, which I visualized in Infranodus. This is a project I'm working on. So first of all, it's visualized as a graph. You see the main concepts, how they relate to one another and which topical clusters they form. If you want to learn more about how the algorithm works, you can watch the other videos or read the research paper on Infernodus website. I will link it to this video as well. But in general, what it does is that it derives the main topics from the text. And then when the words are used in the same context, they will be closer together on the graph and they will have the same color. So based on this information, we can build the topical clusters and also derive the most important influential elements, which you can see here, right? So how do we challenge this discourse? First of all, now that we have an overview, the most important thing to start from is to not look at the words which pop up as the most important one, but to look at the gaps at what is missing. And for that, we have a panel here called blind spots, which actually detects the structural gaps inside the text. And here you can see, for example, that I have a gap between AI exploration and context development. So if I click on highlight and network, I'm going to, you know, see, see which, which topics those are. And I can uh, explore a little bit further the connection between them manually if I want to. But if I don't want to do it manually, here is where, they, where the AI comes uh, to help me because I have a button here that will bridge the gap between those two topics. It will actually uh, use this function here. So I have the context development here and AI exploration here in the AI Insight app. And then if I click this button, bridge the gap, it's going to create a statement which connects those two topics in a way that could be interesting. Okay, so it will generate some content which will connect those two ideas in an interesting way. Uh, and here it says that uh, it proposes the use of interactive visualization software powered by AI and text-based installations to provide a unique opportunity to challenge reader perception. So this I find interesting. I can save it into notes. I can click here and then they will be saved here. This is my project notes where I can save uh, all the interesting ideas that are generated uh, this way. So here the challenge that is being made is based on the finding the gap between two topics that could be connected and then connecting them in a new way. Okay, so if I want, I can also regenerate another gap. So here it's between human interaction and context development. Okay, let's regenerate another one. Notational aesthetics and human interaction. So this I find interesting. I can click bridge the gap and here it's going to try to come up with a statement that will bridge those ideas together. They were not so well connected in my original text or thinking, but the AI will now come up with something that can connect them in an interesting way. So here it's great. It's actually talking about the notion which I was myself developing, uh, the notion of polysingularity and how it can be used as a conceptual language. So I save it into notes and move on further. And what you can also do here that can be really interesting is that if you don't want to generate uh, a statement, you can also generate a research question. This is actually my favorite function. So you have to be the one who answers the question. And this is really a much more interesting way of using it because then you have to do the thinking that will bridge those gaps together. So here it's asking me, what is the impact of a polysingular conceptual language on the cross account interactions between the mind, body and nature in a dynamic and artistic human system? In fact, it makes sense for me because uh, Polysingularity is a concept and a framework that I developed and uh, it's asking me what is the effect on the interactions between the mind, body and nature. So this sounds really legitimate to me and an interesting question of how 
this way of thinking affects the mind and the body and the environment. But let's say I found it a little bit complicated. I can click on more questions and then it's going to generate some other stuff uh, which might be more suitable for me. So I can do this a few times. Of course, you know, it's GPT-3, so it's not always going to do very well. Sometimes it comes up with uh, very strange stuff, but that might also be interesting for you in your own research. So you can regenerate a few questions like this. Another thing that you can do is you can actually challenge uh, this relationship. So in this case, because uh, the relationship doesn't yet, yet exist in my text, we can challenge it, but probably it's going to be also providing me some interesting idea because it will connect the topics I was not really linking before. Uh, but what you can also do, here it came up with a really nice big challenge. What you can also do is to select a specific topic that you want to be challenged. So for example, how we can explore reality using AI. So here I'm just going to deselect those two. Let's deselect them here. And let's explore just the topic of AI exploration. So let's challenge that. Let's ask GPT-3 to make a challenge to that topic. And then it's going to come up with some statement. Uh, it's saying that basically visualization and interactive are limited in their ability to explore, subvert, and bring about meaningful change. Uh -huh. AI technology can provide a more powerful means by creating tangible changes that move beyond the static effects those concepts often produce. Installation art is particularly effective at using movement and AI to create entirely new experience for viewers that cannot be replicated using traditional visualizations or interaction. So it's talking about the importance of experience for users. So I can even edit this a little bit and save it into notes because this can be an interesting idea for me to challenge my own thinking in this direction and how I could explore it further. I can also select not only a specific topic, so if I want to deselect everything, I can just click here for you to know. Uh, I can also just click on the specific ideas that I'm interested in. So I will hide the categories now and I'm going to jump into the graph itself and say that, okay, for instance, talk to me about frameworks and systems. And I want to challenge those. So I selected those two nodes. On the left, I see in which context I was using them. Here, I'm going to see how GPT-3 can challenge those ideas. Framework systems are inefficient, costly, and time-consuming. Okay, so this is a valid critique. They might be like that, it's true, and that they require significant resources to set up and maintain. So I can generate more challenges and somehow question my thoughts in this way. And the idea here and how it's different from using any other tool is that you already see how your thoughts and ideas are connected. So you can challenge the patterns that you encounter. And when you read a text, normally you would have to derive those patterns first in order to challenge them here. They are extracted for you, shown on the graph. And you can either challenge the stuff that are next to each other. So that means they somehow are connected together in this text. But you can also create content. And this is also a way of challenging yourself by connecting stuff at the periphery. So what if I click dynamical research process and I combine it with something completely different? For instance, on the other side of the graph, uh, let's say technology, explore, and AI. So I'm not connecting those ideas at all in my text, but I'm going to ask GPT-3 to make a connection between them now, or to ask me a question that would help me make a connection. So here I'm challenging myself to make a new connection, and this is how I'm using GPT-3 as a sparring partner in my thinking process. Here it says, what impact does research into dynamical process have on the development of artificial intelligence technology? Great. This is a very good question. I'm going to save it and think about it later. So this is how it works. I hope uh, you understand a little bit the approach. Try it out on infranodos.com. If you don't have an account yet, you can make a free one for two weeks. There is a free demo. And also feel free to ask any questions or leave any comments to this video. And also check out our support portal. I will leave the link below in the description to this video where you can learn 
more about different AI use cases and also join the Discord channel and Reddit if you want to ask something or also discuss something. Thank you.